Hello! So today we're looking at a pretty hefty tome. This is American Watercolor Painting by Donaldson Hoops. And this was published, at least the copy I have, is from 1977. I don't think it was published before then. No, it says first published in 1977, and this is the first printing. So, on one hand, this reviews about 1800 to 1977. So you would say that that covers quite a lot of information. And on the other hand, you could say, you know, 1977 wasn't exactly yesterday. So it's going to miss out on some of the more modern kinds of things. But it gives you a good history of what watercolor had been like up until that point. A lot of the images in here are black and white. So this is great for value studies to be able to see, you know, shades of dark and light and how the different values go into them. But as we know, a lot of what watercolors are about are about the color values and the color ranges and the types of ways that they made watercolors and the colors and so on. So it's a shame to see some of these images just in black and white. And certainly they had to make a trade-off for how much the book was going to cost and how many people would buy it. But with the number of pictures that are in here that are black and white, then you have to go out and try to find them in color on the web, if you can find them on the web, and be able to um, get a reasonably good quality version on the web to be able to look at. You know, there's some of these, like Summer Enchantment, this, <laughs> you know, you're, you're trying to get the sense of the image in black and white instead of being able to see what it could be like in color. So there is definitely that caveat involved in here. I would rather pay more to have a book that had everything in color so that I could get a real sense of what these pictures are because for me some sections of this are just frustrating. So Winslow Homer. But at least it gives you a sense, if you don't have it already, of some of the different styles of what like Homer's works were like versus what some other uh, famous watercolor people's works were like. And then you could go and get, you know, a whole book on Homer or a whole book on whoever else that you're interested in and see what their works are like. So for me, this is a good starting review point to look through the different watercolorists at a nice, well-printed, large style to be able to get a sense of what their um, styles are like. But, but these are just so much more useful to me because a key reason that I get into watercolors is I love the way the colors glow and it's an integral part of the way I enjoy watercolors. So I would much rather see the colored version and be able to really appreciate like just that is so <laughs> pretty the way that he's able to get the shading in there. And you know all of these have different levels of uh, detail, different levels of color saturation, and so on. Some of them are quite abstract, some of them are really detailed, and they are all, you know, appreciated for their different styles. You know, I like that one just as much as I like some of the other ones that are super realistic. That's uh, really nice. I like Hopper. So even, you know, clearly I have this book and just paging through it, I'm reminded again of some things that I really appreciate some, about some of these artists and I would be happy to sit down and really stare at some of these works and appreciate the way that they were able to create their images. And I like that they have a range of things, you know, Georgia O'Keeffe, so some of them are fairly abstract, some of them are quite detailed. And you can get a sense of the type of range of creations that you can do with watercolors. Now, <laughs> you know, does he have a bias? You know, I suppose anyone who's doing art has a bias. And are they mostly of a particular style? And is there are a number of artists that are being excluded for all sorts of different reasons. Yes, you're going to run into those kinds of issues. So you just have to except that when a book is made that the person who's making the book is going to include things of certain styles you know he's only got a small number of true abstracts in here but that's the way things go so a nice starting point to have if you haven't read this at all then i would definitely take a look at it 
and see what's in it, but be well aware of the limitations of it, that most of it's black and white. The range of images that he happened to choose are ones that he feels are important to mention, but of course there are artists that aren't mentioned that maybe other people will think are very important to include in an overview like this. Do we really need 10 different pictures from one artist and then have zero pictures from another artist? So I would take a look at it, start there, see what it's got available, and then definitely move beyond this to get to other less mentioned artists and to be able to see a lot of these works in full color. Let me know if you have any questions.